Gio. What's up, man? How's it going? How's my guy doing? I'm doing great. Let's see. You looking at uh, anything? Gio? You hear me? Now I can. Oh, okay. What do you well, mean? No, nah, I just got to the charts right now. Oh, okay. uh, it looks like, yeah, DJ's ranging. I think it's waiting for that um, 7 a.m. news. So. Yep. yep. Yeah, we're going to break that down in a second. I was just taking a look at uh, services and manufacturing PMI. Um, this is interesting. Services fell off. Um Big time. I would say by five points. That's in the manufacturing, obviously, uh, you know, that's back and going again. Inventory, negative 7.6. This all came out last or yesterday. But we got asset purchase facility. We got a lot of um, this is why GJ is ranging right now. It's basically just waiting for all this data to come out. And then obviously we have unemployment claims and GDP. Uh, but yeah, DJ right now is obviously made a nice run up right back into this consolidation, but now it's ranging inside of here. But I think we have a good opportunity if those numbers come out worse than expected, where, you know, we were obviously from the uh, interest rates out of the U.S. We were in this bearish trend and then we found a fake out over here. We had that support and then we got that fake out right over here. Price closed right back into the range with this candle. This candle ended up passing that resistance and continuing right back up. So then we ended up shifting the bias into a bullish trend over here. But now it's starting to exhaust. Now it's starting to taper off a little bit. We are right back into this consolidation, completely corrected the previous move over here. So now I think if we break below support over here, Looks like we're holding the support, but if we break below and we get a nice closed blow, we have a nice, uh, nice candle over here to the left that we can mirror. Nope. There we go. You got about 20 pips right there. And then if you want to take it deeper into that zone, you got about 30. So I think that'll be a good opportunity for us if those numbers come out worse than expected. All right. So that's going to be a big telltale sign. That's why I think GJ. Once it got into this range uh, yesterday, we just started to consolidate, waiting for today's economic data. What's up, Carlos? Yo, what's up, guys? Good morning. How are you? Oh, man. Good Pretty morning. Good. How you doing? Good. Good. Did you, uh, did you take any trades yesterday or no? Uh, no, no, I didn't. Okay. How about you, Joe? No, no trades for me yesterday. Yeah, there, there weren't too many opportunities. And, uh, you know, I caught a couple trades, but at the same time, you know, the there weren't the cleanest opportunities, but they are setups that I've seen before. And, and the more you journal, the more you'll uh, start to see these and recognize these setups. But right now, again, we're just kind of ranging. This isn't something I'm interested in trading in. Um, I'm just looking for a break out of here. So we'll just throw a little reminder right here. And we're just waiting for either resistance or support to break because now we're getting this economic data in about 24 minutes. Looks like we're holding this support over here, but let's look at uh, gold. Gold starting to come up out of this range. This looks like a nice move, but we are in this consolidation. But looking at the daily over here, the daily, obviously we broke out of our channel that we were respecting over here. And then once we got that, um, the interest rate talks, price just kind of tanked all the way back down to 1760. So now we have a clean support at 1760. We have this wick right over here. I'll just use these. This wick right over here, which uh, looks like it's, it, it basically got filled by this wick right here, but we are holding support, right? We're holding support with this bearish candle, closing about 50% of this candle right here. We This candle ended up rejecting, you know, coming all the way up here, but rejecting and still closing below this support right here. This candle now created a bottom wick, and now it's flipping bullish, continuing bullish.
But the only thing is we are in this consolidation. So what I want to wait for are a couple different things when it comes to taking any trades on gold. Gold right now, technically, is consolidating, obviously, on the, on the higher time frames. But it's also creating lower highs over here, right? It's got this bearish pressure over here. Yes, we are holding support. We have three rejections of this area right down here at 1774, right? We're holding support right here, starting to come up. But we do have a lot of consolidation on the higher time frame. Oh, Gary's coming out. We do have a lot of consolidation over here, and this is the four hour. So do you want to trade in something like this? Yeah, it's a little, little touchy. Um, but we are tapping this area three times over here. So it gives you a little bit more conf fl confluence that if we do break above this area, we might have some room to continue up. What's up, Gary? Good morning. Good morning, man. So right over here, this is the one hour. Again, we're rejecting this area multiple times, but now we're in this uh, consolidation area. Now, this is a, um, I, I like the, the setup and the trade taken by Gary over here. Now, this is a great setup right here. Only thing is, I came to the charts, and I'm not going to take something as soon as I come into the charts. I would have probably entered after this candle closed, anticipating price to continue right back up. But at the same time, is this the smartest trade trading in, in this range. We could very well get right back into this range and continue to consolidate. But the only thing is we do have this clean move over here, which is probably what gave you the confluence, right, Gary? Shall I say that again? <laughs> I was saying uh, the reason you took this trade is obviously the setup over here, which is nice, but also this clean move right here. You yes. have ignored this? Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, again, the main reason I didn't take this was because I just came to the charts. I'm not going to jump into a trade right away. And second, uh, I just didn't want to be in this range. I think the cleaner move and the smarter move on a higher time frame range over here would be to wait for these moves over here. These candles, and you got the same kind of candles over here to the left, right? So this whole range right here is a key range for you to trade in. Right, so somewhere in there um, is going to give you a good indication that price will continue cleanly through this zone at least. All right, once we get into uh, 1792, maybe we get a little choppy coming all the way up here, but um, this will give you a solid confluence. So I'm just waiting on a clean close above this resistance right here, maybe a retest where we take this up. Retest right over here, and then we continue right back up. So let's see if that's what we get over here uh, on gold. But again, just be aware, we do have heavy consolidation over here. We're probably, well, what we are waiting for, I know what we're waiting for is uh, PCE tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to have some nice volume with this data coming out. But we also have GDP coming out today and then unemployment claims. So this is kind of what we're waiting for for 8.30. We should get a nice, strong push out. Let's see what we're expecting over here. So we're expecting unemployment to come back below uh, 400,000, right? That was a big area that we uh, ended up getting below uh, because that's, that's pre-pandemic uh, unemployment claims um, when it comes to uh, those claims coming. Sorry. Um, when it comes to... Uh, those that data coming out so the first time that it did this was i want to say a couple weeks ago here we go yeah this was the first time that we came below four hundred thousand. was uh early june beginning of the month so it looks like you know we came above that right over here at 412 but now let's see if we come right below four hundred thousand claims gdp expected to stay the same but we shall see what we get over here. But this is the zone. If I'm going to trade in this, first of all, we break the uh, the bearish pressure over here, right? Well, we didn't really get that. We got that fake out over here. But we do have that bearish pressure 
I want to wait for price to break above here, retest and continue up. That's simple. GJ, not doing much. So let's see um, the London chat. So Gary, you were using the fibs on this? Yeah, that's just to see about good retest. Mm. So I, have a, I don't know, I just I've got the trend line there. It broke the trend line yesterday. Hasn't really retested it, so maybe the 62 to 70.5. And you've got a 200 EMA as well. Yes. Um, only thing is, keep in mind with the fibs, they, the the more um, the market is consolidating, the less they um, they seem to work. You know, so you really want a strong trending market to be using fibs. They do work, but you know they, they're not as strong when it comes to uh, some of these lower time frames or not lower time frames, but consolidating markets. Like if I drew a fib right here anticipating that you know like a, a retracement over here wouldn't really wouldn't really work too much like uh 78.6 over here like it's it's just consolidating in here They're, they really work with trending markets but then again i don't use them too that, much the only thing i'd say about gold is obviously it didn't break structure to the downside yeah apart from that i'd say that you know it looks quite clean but yeah, this it's, not, it's, not, it's not trending, is it? So, so where'd you enter on this trade? As um, hold on, I'm being I don't two seconds. I'm being called by a little one. Sure. I like this wick right here. This is the candle we always look at, right? Get this wick always gets filled. Not always, but most of the time gets filled. Nice retesting candle. This candle ends up closing bullish with a wick to fill. It's beautiful. This was about twelve, fifteen. Wow, about thirty one thirty two pips already. Just get rid of this. dollar so the dollar over here as well broke the previous bearish trend that we were respecting and then we found support interest rates came in or at least talking about it the market sentiment and pushed price all the way up to 92.40 so now we're creating these lower highs over here printing these lower highs and we have a strong support but if price closes below that support we should fill this wick and we should come down into this area right over here at least. We'll continue right back down. I think we're kind of just correcting that market sentiment that we got from last Wednesday. So I'm back. It's all good. All good, brother. Um, yeah, we got what I entered in the 30 minute. Uh, we broke the mind of resistance. With a strong bearish, strong bearish bullish candle. Then we had a bearish. Then we had another bullish doji type. Right here. Um, yeah, that's it. And then it does as we broke the doji high on the thirty minute. Mm. Yeah, let's see. Uh... Be right back. Sounds good, Carlos. Yeah, let's see. So, like how price was consolidating, but at the same time, printing higher lows. Price just starting to turn over here. 
Graded this high, comes up, higher low, higher low. It's just a little messy on the lower time frames. But I think this could be our breakthrough. Maybe price stays in this range over here until 830. Maybe we continue to range in here, but if we get a clean move above here, this should be nice. Get exactly this. JPP news in 12 minutes. Yes, right? sir. We just sit here and wait. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, GJ. I'm looking for price to break the support over here. Got a nice clean move, about 30, 37 pips right down into this area, about 20 right into this resistance. But if we get continued bullish news, then we'll the, um, the news drives it down. We can take an impulse entry that uh, breaks that wick, lower wick. Mm. And which time frame? Um, any 30 minute per day. Yeah. As you break the lowest wick there. Right over here? No, the one lower. Right, right here? That's it, yeah. If the news drives past that, you're going to go as it breaks it. Uh, with with all these wicks over here, I would wait for uh, a nice close blow, at least on the lower time frame, to like the fifteen minute or the five minute, yeah. and get that little retest over here and or the top wick, and then take this down. Just because like GJ's bullish, really, you know, based on the higher time frames, we've been extremely bullish. So I definitely hesitate when it comes to selling GJ. Uh, even though we got this movement, but this was from the U.S. interest rates as well as them extending the lockdown. Are you guys extending your lockdown? But at the same time, we are still creating higher lows and higher highs. So it's um, you, you definitely have to think twice about taking a sell, uh, especially an intraday sell. But um, scalps, obviously, you could grab quick, quick sells on it, but um, all the fundamentals point to bullish movement. But if we close below here on the on the higher time frames, the support or at least one fifty four or five hundred, I think then we're reacting to this consolidation area. We wanted to retest it real quick, and then we're continuing right back down to retest these lows, one fifty two flat. But if not, we could hold the support, and continue right back up to one fifty five. 500 and then eventually 156 and then continue right back up but again on the monthly i think the monthly i don't see the monthly flipping right we're almost at the end of the month i see the monthly kind of staying the way it is right here and then the next candle the next month july we come down maybe a little bit and then we pass the high of these candles and continue right back up especially if we get some strong fundamentals just like this setup right here so if the monthly ends up closing like this, that'd be good. And then we get a pass of the high. Very similar top wicks over here. Yeah, I like that. What's up? I like that. Yeah. Because we're still in the recovery. And, and, you know, global economies are still opening up. Even though we have this Delta variant and stuff like that, global economies are still opening up. So people are pouring their money into these risk currencies. And people are taking their money out of safe haven currencies. So people are taking their money out of the DN, putting it into the pound. And the more they open up, the more they get their economy going back again, the better they're going to be. And the more this is going to rise. Yes. Weekly looks nice, huh? Weekly, you could see, obviously, um, maybe the weekly closes like this. Then you get that bottom wick, which is the bottom wick on the monthly, right, next week. And then we continue right back through this area. 
I honestly fully anticipate that happening. So it's hard for me to sell GJ unless we're going to create this top wick on the monthly over here, right? So if we start to come down a little bit, we're creating this top wick right here. And then the next candle ends up creating an even uh, longer wick down at the, the bottom of the weekly. Then we continue right back up. Hey, Stefanos. What's up, buddy? Uh, so how many setups can you pot potentially have? Like, do you have a certain amount or is it just, do you go by what you, like, you've seen before? That's that's a great question. Um, I Honestly, I think the market only presents, you know, a, a certain number of setups, right? Like profitable setups. But, you know, you can technically have all those. It just takes experience, right? So all you have to do is, and, and like I showed you guys before, uh, let's see, my journal over here. And this is like a little project that you could do uh, for your own trading is create this column right over here on your Trello and have these different cards over here for different setups that you look for. So this is break and retest. You have a, a classic break and retest right here is what you look for. And then you have the details of the setup, like when it occurred, right? The time, the session, very important. What time frame this is on, right? And then the next time you see this, a uh, classic break and retest in the trending market on gold or any other pair, you put it in here. I mean, you put the details for that in there. And the more experience you get, the more you're going to be adding to these um, setups. Like yesterday is uh, something I looked at. Actually, no, this was two days ago. This was a trade that I took on. Hold on, was this? Uh, yeah, this was gold. So this was a trade I took on gold. Um, now with this setup right here, I typically like to look for this candle. Um, I'll just point this out for you. I typically like this candle to have a bottom wick right here. And then this candle right here, not really having a bottom wick and then this candle creating its top wick and then passing the low of that candle. Does that make sense? I pointed this out to you guys a lot. That yeah, kind of setup. Sense. But what happened was this was a setup that I'm, I'm always kind of wary about because this candle has no bottom wick. So there's not much range for it to drop. So I want to see how many times this plays out. And that's why I, I put it in here as a new setup. And I'm going to be putting the one I typically look for every time in here as well to see how many times it actually occurs. It's like a little uh, study that you do on your pair. And I didn't know what to call it, so I called it an um, impulse volume push, you could call it. Uh, but again, this is the one that I, I typically don't really take uh, just because there's no range, there's no wick for it to fill. Uh, normally, I like that bottom wick on the, on the bearish candle and then no really no bottom wick on the uh, bullish candle, just the top wick. So this is something I highly, highly recommend you guys do. Um, it was honestly just something that I pointed out to Tiger, that something that he could do. And then I realized it was really, you know, a good practice that I might uh, implement and just start putting it in here. But I really have a lot of my setups in my head. It's just, um, just from seeing it so many times. Looks like the four hour just flipped bearish. We are holding the support, but we're continuing up. But um, Carlos, that, that was a great question. How many setups do you think you would say is in your toolbox right now, in your arsenal? Man, honestly, like none because um, I guess because, you know, I still haven't really got the journaling down. Okay. So, but I mean, there have been like certain like, patterns that I'm familiar with or like not familiar but like I've seen before mm -hmm. and you know when I do see that I just like probably like you know I just probably paper trade it just to make sure it's something that you know could be right yep so well okay so um 
you know, when, when we hop on that second Zoom, um, I'm hoping today, uh, when we hop on that Zoom, the one thing we're going to go through is obviously journaling. Like we got, we got to get you journaling. But the second thing is like, you don't need to be journaling to have setups in your head, you know, of, of different things that you look for. Like uh, this is something that you probably always look for. It's probably not, not a fake out, but a break and retest, right? This looks very familiar to you, right? Right. You would probably take this after this candle closed bearish in a bearish trend. Like this is what you always look for. Yeah, yeah, things, yeah, things in that nature, like, you know, things that, like, especially when it respects, like, the support, and because I know that, that, you know, it's, not, it's possible for it to, like, continue bullish, this is respecting the support, mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah, things in that area. Yeah, um, but this is just all you want to do is just make sure, like, okay, this is all I'm looking for, like, if this is the only thing that you are comfortable taking, it's the only thing you're looking for. Right. And then if you see a possible trade um, in the market that you could possibly take, instead of taking it the first time you see it, you're just going to journal it. You're going to say, OK, next time I see this, maybe the time after that or even four or five times it takes me to see it. I'm going to actually put my money on the line and, and, and take a chance with it because I've seen it enough times. But, you know, sometimes it only takes two or three times for you to enter maybe like a low risk trade and then you start to up your risk with that setup. The, the cycle starts every single time uh, with a new setup when it comes to risk and um, being more and more comfortable with it. So you just got to get used to it and um, just make sure that, you know, if, if it's a setup that you see for the first time, you're not just jumping in. You're not just taking it right away. You're studying it. You're back testing that setup multiple times on the simulator or on the rewind tool on TradingView. And eventually you get better and better and more confident with it. And then you move on. All right. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Of course. Carlos, what would you say you're uh, struggling with right now? Maybe we could go over it because we got ranging markets and uh, we can, we can definitely work on some stuff. Um. Well, I would say like I would say like just the the basic things that I just have to get used to like identifying like I guess like dojis and um yeah pr yeah pretty much like that just identifying like um like the structure. Okay, um, you saying like starting with the higher time frames? Yeah, like I um let's say. Yeah, because like I was like, because sometimes, because I just really have to. Um, the only thing I really have to keep in mind is like, I know uh, sometimes like dojis could be like a certain, like, what's that word I'm looking for? Like, you know, I guess like, like signs or like, you know, how you're not supposed to trade or like, you know, like it's not enough volume. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess like stuff in that, like, not really sure how to put it in words. Um, you're saying just like recognizing patterns in the market? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let me just check this to see if this came out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Gary, all the same stuff. Obviously, yeah. bank rates were probably going to stay the same anyway. They're fine. Won't, really, won't really move them, would it? What's up? Won't really move them, would it? Um, probably not. Yeah, this is um, it's going to... Hold on. A waste of time. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I did. All right, so it's creating a low right over here. It probably left with Addis. Okay. We're still busy talking. We uh, missed the news coming out. I don't know. Damn, okay. Hello. This is just like a, a rocket. Like, this is something that, you know, you shouldn't get FOMO over because you couldn't have even catch this on the on the one minute. It would have just been like a jump in entry where we passed a lot of these wicks right over here, like Gary was talking about, and it, it just tanked. So, you know, this is something you shouldn't get uh, FOMO about. 
This is where the news comes out, economic data comes out, and you wait about 10, 15 minutes, and then you take the reaction. You see the low being created, you wait for some kind of a resistance to form maybe, and then we take the price right back down. Or you look for the correction of that news. Different uh, options over there. So, um, Carlos, you're, you're talking about recognizing patterns in the market and, and understanding, you know, different things that are, that are probably going to happen. Yeah. Okay. So that all comes with experience and knowing your pair, right? Where if you just go back into the charts and you look at different things that have happened in the past, um, let's see with, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Well, we can start with this fake out right over here. So what you see over here is a consolidating market over here, right? You have this consolidating market and what needs to happen for price to break out of here? Some kind of fundamental event, especially like a move like this. You need some fundamentals to break us out of this. So then what happened was they were talking about increasing interest rates out of uh, England and we got this spike up to reach historical highs in the year at 156. Then what, what did I say? Actually, you weren't in the group yet, but what I said was once we reach these highs up here and then I saw like movement like this over here, I said we weren't getting much economic data coming out of uh, GJ till later in the week. I said we're probably going to range just like this in here. And that's exactly what we got, especially because on the monthly – it's a very significant area coming down 2007, 2015. We ended up creating this trend over here. And now I've been pointing this out for months now of price possibly coming right back up into this area, 155, 156. If you go back and watch the YouTube um, sessions from, from let's say months ago, February, March, April, um, you'll see that I was saying price is going to come up to 155 and it's going to, it's going to act a little funny over here. Um, this is where it wants to react. Not so much because of this trend line, but because of these candle body highs, these candle wicks over here, support, resistance, support over here, right? So now what happened was we came up into this area. Let's go back to the lower time frames. Wow, like a GJ coming down. Um, so then what happened was, we got interest rate talks coming out of Great Britain or coming out of the U.S. You know, every single central bank is going to piggyback off of, of what uh, the Fed does. So that progress had it here as well as extending the lockdown to July 19th, I believe it is. So when it comes to structure and recognizing structure, all of a sudden we're printing lower highs over here, right? Lower lows, lower highs. Lower lows, coming all the way down here, comes up, um, sellers get out, buyers take over for a little bit, and then all of a sudden we continue right back down, continuing that trend. So in here, there's no reason for you to take any kind of buys until price breaks this resistance over here, right? No reason for you to take buys until price gets above this trend line over here. So what happened was we broke below a significant support over here at 152, broke below support into this consolidation over here. And then we closed right back into the range. We didn't get any kind of resistance formed right here. What we got was a close right back into the range and it actually closed above this trend line over here as well. So what you do is you wait for the retest over here and then you can take this up. Probably would have grabbed this on the 30 minute, right? Get this support forming over here, price breaking the bearish trend faking out as well. So there's a high probability price is going to come right back up to the nearest resistance. And there's also a probability price is going to break out of that resistance. And that's what we got. So you could have taken this as price past the high of these wicks. This wick right over here possibly uh, would have been risky with this resistance, but um, you could have definitely gotten that. And you would still be in, right? Right, so, yeah. So that's this, the change in structure. A lot of times what you see is a support forming over here. Obviously, this is a fake out, but sometimes you see some kind of a support formed over here where price is starting to print 
higher lows. And then we change the, the structure from there. And then, you know, you get your, your bullish trend over here. I know that looks confusing, but I'll get rid of it. Um, but what, what happened here is we just got the fake out and just a, a complete correction of this move over here. So now what, what's going on is we've been in this bullish trend, printing higher lows, right? Creating a high, coming down, creating a, a, a higher low, and then retesting the previous high. That's what GJ has done. We've either consolidated or um, just created the support and then continue right back up. Right over here, we created the high, consolidated, continue right back up. Now price is starting to tire out. It's starting to... Um, uh, buyers are starting to come out. You're collecting orders in here, right? And then the longer the consolidation, the harder the push out of that consolidation. Fundamentals pushes out of that consolidation, just like what I was telling you guys over here, right? Fundamentals yeah, pushed us out of this. Fundamentals this morning literally just pushed us out of this, but no need to get FOMO on this because uh, there was no way to catch this news unless you just entered as we broke the low of these wicks. But the, where would your stop loss be? Are you anticipating this far of a drop with that news coming out? Now, James anticipated this, um, taking sales somewhere up here, right? Yeah, I got, it was annoying. I got my, I got like 25 pips and I had a runner and I was on a call and then I saw my runner got stopped out. Well, my MT4 glitched. It said I was up 30 quid, but then... The spread took me out. It actually did take me out with uh, that wake up. You see when the news came out, those two wakes took me out. Oh, right here? Yeah, but my MT4 was weird. It said I was up like 30, and then it glitched, and it all went away. Oh, and, uh, wow. Where'd you, where'd you enter on this one? Oh, okay. I anticipated that like a fake out, the bullish move. Was this your original stop loss or no? No, this is your entry. Yeah, that's my entry. I took it on the, you see the second candle with the wake up right over to the right, over to the right. The next one, that one. Okay. So I you, took that on the one minute. Okay. As this candle and then, was coming up or as it started flipping? As it started flipping. Okay, cool. Because I anticipated the big, bullish move as like a fake out okay did, i see you always trade that kind of setup like a fake out and then the, the move after the fake out yeah you so i want to see like what's or... actually like sorry i'm sorry were you saying uh like me specifically trading that yeah you trade like that sort of setup a lot like fake outs then the, the reversal after kind of thing you know? yeah i actually got this yesterday on gold uh there was a, a beautiful fake out should have held the whole thing um, that was a nice move, though. But did you secure 25 pips? I secured like 85%. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, what we had right over here was this move right over here. Let's get rid of this. We had price coming right back up into this area. Obviously, this is the real resistance now. But once price came back into this range, I ended up taking this as we created this top wick over here and then passed the low of this candle. And then it just dropped, I believe like 15 pips. Uh, this was after my session at 11 o'clock. So uh, I was kind of out of my rules, but I, I saw the setup and I knew it was gonna play out. I had a good feeling. And then um, I just closed the full thing, which pff, definitely should have stayed in. I didn't think it was gonna drop that hard though. Neither did I. I, I thought I thought I'm gonna get stuck in that order again, you know, till tomorrow or till today, like. I thought we were going to stop somewhere in here, you know. But it never uh, never plays out like that, does it? <laughs> Dropped. Some nice lower lows, lower highs. I know there were on the, on the one hour, but on the 30 minute too. Look, gold is starting to come up to this resistance. I'm, uh, I'm going to use the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back.
All right. Let's see what we got. Looks like we're rejecting this level over here on GJ. Let's see. So we are in this consolidation over here. We just got this news coming out. Um, this looks like after breaking the bullish structure over here. Let's look at the higher time frames. Four hour. Strong four hour candle right over here. Creating a top wick past the low of this candle right over here. So we do have a strong support over here on the four hour, right? Are we going to react to this? What I'm looking for is price reacting to this creating a resistance over here and then retesting the lows that it just created. So wait for it to react to this level, wait for a resistance to form, and then possibly take this down. Maybe it retests 154.500 right up here and then forms resistance to come right back down. Hey, James. Yep. What's up, buddy? How are you um, feeling after our talk? Like, how, how are you doing? Um, better. You know, like, this week I was up and I am I lost about, let's say, my counts. I took a withdrawal. Well, my count was up 1,340. Mm -hmm. And then I got it back down to 1,300 because I lost. Got it back up, got it back down at 40 quid. I don't know, is it just mentally or what? But now it's up at like three, 1,311. But okay. whenever I get to that 40, I just drops again, you know? I don't know, is it just mentally like it's like a barrier or something? I don't know. But it's just, it's like an up and down kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know how I get through that kind of stuff. Maybe discipline. I know there's a barrier. Um, there's a natural barrier on your mind when your account, like either your history or anything like that is in, in the negatives. Like you have a bunch of losses. I remember in the beginning of my trading, I would open up a new account uh, just to like get that mental barrier out. So I'm not seeing that. I'm just starting a new account, stacking good trades on top of good trades. And that would help a lot. Um, I don't know if it's the money thing. It's, I, get, I mean, that that's definitely seems like it's a barrier for you, but um, just try not thinking about the money, you know, just, Stack yeah. good trade on top of good trade. Manage your risk. You know, find the, the smart trades, the good trades, trades out of a range, you know. And every time you stack good trade on top of good trade, you can't go wrong doing that. Taking profit, cutting losses short, not hesitating when it, when it comes to risking, uh, yeah, managing risk. Yeah, like what stage do you think you should like increase your risk then or how? You know, I know you're talk, thinking about doing that at the moment, but like, what stage should you do that at? When, when you definitely are consistent and profitable, but also um, you don't want to do it too quick. It, it's tough. And I, I don't know if it, you know, it's, it's different with me trading in front of other people. Um, I, I don't want to use that as like a, a crutch or anything like that. But I, it, first of all, it really depends on other people. But the best way to... Let's say, forget trading, getting rich in general is to do it slowly and to do it, you know, smart and, and not get rich quick because think about the people that win the lottery. You know, they blow the account right away or they blow everything they just won. Or think about yeah. someone that over risks on a trade and they win that one trade, right? And all of a sudden they're up like, let's say they, they risked a, a couple lots and they're up like a grand on a trade and their account is only like a grand or two. And what, what are they going to do the next time? They're going to try to do the same exact thing and they're going to blow their account. So, I mean, obviously that's, that's an extreme, but when it comes to just risking a certain percentage of your account, every single time you're taking a trade um, and, and making sure that you're managing risk the right way, just do it. You know, there, there is no rush, you know, you, you don't have many bills to pay. You don't have much to, to worry about. You don't have a family to support and stuff like that. So embrace that. You know, embrace the fact that you don't have those pressures on you right now that um, you could just kind of, you know, slowly build this thing and make sure you do it the right way instead of kind of rushing stuff. But yeah, 
you know, when, when you get into that space where, you know, you're, you're building your account, like big percentages, like you're, you're getting into the 20%, the 50%, um, but where you can get it to that or maybe smaller percentages, but constantly growing it instead of like gaining 20% and then losing 15%, you know what I'm saying? When you yes, get to that point, um, then you can start increasing risk a little bit. You know, yeah. this comes with confidence. And also not letting overconfidence get to you um, and just doing it the right way. Yeah, just time really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I just realized that um, I started an FTMO challenge this week just to see what it was like. You know, I used the profits from my, my own funds to buy it. Just some cur- Like I did it before and I failed, but uh, I forgot I left the GJ cell open on it and it was a two lot. And now it's uh, 1,200. Like, it's mad how uh, I forgot about it because it's not my own money, do you know? And you're still in it? Yeah. Wow, good shit, man. Only I, I is, I'm that. telling funny talent. <laughs> Where's the horns? <laughs> What's that? Where's the horns? The horn, yes. Yeah, we're, we're, we got to get those horns out. Wake up, my fiance. <laughs> Um, that's awesome, though. So you're just kind of riding that. I guess you just. I always forget that. about um, that account, though, because I'm so used to just doing my own funds. Mm-hmm. Dude, part of me wants to take uh, GJ cells over here because interest rates are staying the same. Let's see. We're below this area over here, and we're kind of retesting it. I'm probably going to wait for price to close below this area. Is this candle closed with no bottom wick over here. We got the bullish candle closing right here after rejecting this area. So price needs to kind of um, break out of this range right here. From here to here. And plus, we got that support over here to the left. We got a bunch of good uh, sounds on here. Call of Duty or uh, Grand Theft Auto. That's when you guys take a bad trade. Seven thirty four. Ooh, gold. All right, so gold, we're starting to break above this level. Uh, Gary, you're still in. In gold, yeah. Well done, man. Good shit. Um, I love T- TP one's forty pips. Beautiful. Um, close. Where did you enter, Gary? Uh, I'm in at right over here. Seventeen eighty two eighteen. Oh, nice. Has it broke the high of that doji? Uh, right here. That's it. Have you secured it at all? Uh, Stop to break even. Oh, okay. I entered as it broke that high there. Oh, you just moved it. <laughs> My bad. Nice. I was looking at that too. See, as we broke this support right here, right, we broke this resistance, previous it. support. Creates a high, comes down, closes with a wick to fill. Could enter right after this candle close. Stop loss right here. Yeah, yeah, good of yeah. Good perfect. Yeah, we're just waiting for. 
price to break that area, but also breaking the support over here. Look who we got. What's up, Pat? <laughs> hey, brother. What's up, my man? Doing? Pat's I'm having good. a great week, huh? <laughs> Go, baby. Yeah, 100 man. pips on GJ. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, so unpack it for us. What'd you take? Uh, Tuesday move. Tuesday, Tuesday move. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to adjust because of my schedules and all that. Trying, like, like you've been saying, trying to adjust more to the four hours. Mm -hmm. So, I think what I was happy about the trade was that um, just before the bullish run up, you know. So, if you take the oh, let me annotate real quick. And yep. sorry, uh, I hope I'm not like interrupting. No, 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 please. This helps like, everyone learn. Okay, perfect. So I was eyeing this level, right? Because we had formed like a. Um, can can you go into the four, please? Sorry. Thank you, thank you. And then where was Tuesday? This was yeah around here. Yeah, yeah. So here, All right? Um. So I think I was eyeing this, right, after this uh, bullish um, uh, bullish run-up. I was eyeing this support, you know, and uh, essentially I was saying, hmm, with the way in which things were looking on the four-hour and I think one-hour, mm -hmm. um, I was like, oof, man, if it drops below here, um, below the support, it could maybe come down to retest, you know, some other area on the one hour pretty much. So I was eyeing about 30 pips, you know, in terms of like a bearish move. However, I was like, I looked at the overall trend. Uh, I think there was a wick to fill on the higher time frames, on the daily and the weekly, if I'm not mistaken. And I was like, you know, let me just, let me just sit this one out and adjust my approach or adjust my bias to mostly bullish, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this fake out then happened, and which I stayed out of. But essentially, if you go down onto the 15 minute, because I entered this trade on the 15 minute, Ooh, get in over here, huh? Yeah, I, I, uh, so, fuck, where is that support that I drew? Uh, it's probably right here, this zone. Okay, so, all right, it's a bit confusing now. Go to the thirty the high that we created, and then we came down to retest the trend line, and then we just continued up from here around six a.m. Um, no. Oh, okay, yeah. So this was the candle with which I entered. Which, which one? So the oh. I think I, I just drew it. So after this uh, uh, bullish break, mm. I was I. Uh, watch for the retest, you know, yep. and then once this candle closed bullish after that, I pretty much entered here. I like it. That's perfect. Yeah, the yeah. Um, um, the fact that there, there's multiple different confluences here, right? You have the retest of this trend, right? You have the fake out on the four hour. So if we go to the four hour over here, which is perfect, there's multiple different entries right here for this move. Yeah. Uh, yeah here we are so the four hour forget this support and forget that this was here forget any of these two candles right over here we have the support forming over here so it looks like we're going to continue right back up you got the bearish candle and then the bullish candle forming forming a support on the four hour so obviously the lower time frames are um, a strong support as well right over here you have this candle closing all the way back down in here with the trend, though, we get the fake out because this candle closes below that support and this candle closes right back in. But look at this four-hour candle. This should tell you right here that we're going to have a massive correction um, of this bearish move from the interest rates coming out of the U.S. and the extended lockdown coming out of uh, Great Britain. So this candle, 
you could have had a swing entry. If you want to have a, that wide of a stop loss and a safe stop loss, you can put it below this current candle. Anticipate price to come all the way back up into this area right over here. Because this is a strong bullish engulfing candle right over here with a clean move to the left that you can enter as soon as that candle closes. Now, if you want a better entry than that, you got plenty of other ones. So again, you got that fake out right there and you got the confluence of the bullish trend that we're retesting to continue right back up. You're trading with the trend over here. So you could have taken another entry. So or I actually did. I took another entry when uh, it formed support on the uh, four hour and then continued bullish. So, so you took I one did. after that big candle? Yeah. Nice. Perfect. Um, that's why you look at multiple time frames, right? Yeah. Before you enter, that's in your checklist of check. All right, four hour. What's the four hour look like? All right, what's the daily look like? All right. I did. I did want to ask though. Uh, like I'm noticing, and I don't know if anybody mm -hmm. else here has noticed the, the same, but I'm noticing sometimes like U.S. news impacts the way um, impacts GJ. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, I did want to ask, like, do, um, do you know, like, what exactly, like, what are the patterns, like, what what kind of news exactly tends to affect DJ? Because there's a few times where maybe I, I'm in a trade and then I'm not expecting any news on on GBP or JPY, and then all of a sudden market just goes haywire. Well, think about how how much the U.S. economy impacts the rest of the world. Right. And it normally has to do with anything coming out of the central banks, anything coming out of the Fed. Um, the ECB is going to um, pay attention and probably do a copycat move of the Fed. Um, the, the Bank of England is going to be doing the same exact thing. Bank of Australia. Right. They're all going to be piggybacking off what the Fed does, because the Fed is the, the business currency, the reserve currency, everything. Um, so or the, the dollar is so. Um, whenever we, you know, we uh, talk about any kind of raise in interest rates over here, what happened last Wednesday? The 16th, right? What, did, what happened on Wednesday? You had the Fed coming out saying that um, we do think inflation is going to be a, a lot, not a lot worse. They, they never said that, but they said that maybe inflation is a little bit more serious than we're thinking, and it's going to be a little bit more than temporary. So look at this, 16th, 17th, you get this massive push down, you get this fake out, price closing above the current bearish structure, get a retest of that area, and then price continues right back up. And so, so, so you're saying that caused this massive bearish move not yeah. only that not only that yeah. but boris johnson also announced that they were going yeah. to increase and not increase but extend the current lockdown, lockdown. phase yeah they were in. i think they're in phase two gary you would know better than i do are you in phase two or three uh phase two still phase two okay so they yeah. extended phase two to july 19th okay so um those two things obviously pausing the economy or you know, extending the lockdown of the economy is going to push the, the value of the pair down. And then we retrace the entire thing over here. So now they just talked about, um, what's it called? They, they just kept interest rates the exact same, 0.10%. So now that's gonna create a bearish movement over here. But before that happened, what we were looking at was the daily over here. The daily was, was bullish. Right, the daily was bullish. This candle was was bullish over here, looking like it was continuing up. But what did yeah. we say in the beginning of the stream over here? We said that the monthly is probably going to close like this with this wick over here. Uh, 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 you know, either a weak or maybe a strong body bull, uh, bearish candle over here, but something similar to this candle, right? So, what why, happened? Why, was, why do you say that? Because. Right over here, you had the recovery of something kind of similar. Obviously, um, you know, the, the COVID tank uh, for uh, over here, uh, the COVID, not tank, but the COVID drop over here should have gotten a lot more than it did. But over here was also the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis and the, the market crash, global market crash, which pushed okay. price all the way down here. And then we entered our recovery phase. We retraced a little bit, 
continued all the way down to make new lows at uh, 119, and then we started our recovery phase. So whenever a price gets to a certain price point, it tends to do the same thing historically. So now we're in this sort of area right over here, but what I'm looking at is this setup where you have a strong bullish candle, strong bullish candle, very similar candle, right? No bottom wick, barely, and a little top wick, right? This candle ends up never passing the high of that, creating that like tweezer uh, top wicks over here with a wick to fill on the bearish candle, closed a weak bearish candle. This candle ended up pushing the high the next month, ended up passing the high of these candles and continuing up. So what did I say over here? That we could very well end up consolidating the rest of the week um, and then not the rest of the week, but into next week as well, kind of consolidating where we are. And then the next candle pushes up and passes the high of that candle of these candles and continues right back up. And that's if they um, don't extend the lockdown, you got positive stuff coming about the economy, GDP, PMI coming out of uh, Great Britain, that'll cause Great Britain to continue up. But again, like I was saying in the beginning of the stream, what have we been saying for months? That once price taps into this area, not only the trend line, but also these candle body highs up here, um, price is going to have some issues at 155. Do you remember mm -hmm. me saying that, you know, yeah. a month or two ago when we were all the way down here? I said, mm -hmm. once we get to 155, 156, we're going to have some issues. And that's what we got. We got our second bearish monthly candle in the last, I don't know, six, seven months since uh, November. Mm -hmm. This is our second bearish candle over here. So right now, what I was saying was, we could get that bearish movement over here because we are printing lower highs. We could get that bearish movement only because this candle, this current weekly candle, which is beautiful, by the way, nice little retest, a strong bullish candle. But we also, the week is almost over. We need to create that top wick to fill. Now, I was saying the next week, we could get that bottom wick forming and then we could fill that wick and continue right back up. Oh. But that could come with this. Now, what we have here is interest rates staying the same, which is obviously bearish for the, the country. We're now passing the low of this candle. We're creating lower highs over here, bearish pressure. We came right back up to retest this consolidation area. We wanna go all the way over here as well. Come right back into this area and now we're closing right back out of it. So now this could create a top wick over here and then candles printing all the way down here and continuing this bearish movement. But we'll see, okay. um, especially the fact that we, you know, never really passed the high of that wick, right? And now we're passing the low of this candle right over here. But let's see what we're doing because I feel like we might be missing a move. I was waiting for price to close below the support over here. Okay, so you got this consolidation area. We want price to, to exit out of this area because you got cleaner moves over here. Interest rates staying the same. Obviously, interest rates are the mother load of fundamentals for any pair, for any country. That's number one. Number two, I would say, is probably GDP. Really depends on the current climate of the economy and the current climate of the world and where it's at. I do like this setup over here. So the five-minute... We're getting a close below this area. So it's about to close in um, one minute. The 15 minute candle, we want the 15 minute candle to close below this area. And then we get a top wick formed and then a pass of these candles over here. Got a nice clean move to the left. So we should be able to grab um, at least 20 pips out of the 76 over here if we do come right back down to this area but we could come into here. Anywhere in here. You know you have this clean move to mirror. But yeah, Pat, we missed you. How's work been? Oh, that's crazy, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of drama. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of traveling, but, you know, that's uh, slowing down right now just because of the uh, massive spike in COVID cases. 
in uh, in uh, S- uh, South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not good. It's, uh, yeah, uh, I think just because we're in the middle of like flu season, the heart of winter. True. Um, I think that just confuses a lot of things um, and add, adds like a lot of complexities on top of like this COVID. So yeah, man, things are a bit crazy. And so, yeah, things are slowing down as a result of that, but nonetheless, you know, all, all good. Um, just having, you know, focusing more time on uh, actually just taking live trades and uh, practicing some of the stuff that I have been um back testing yeah, yes pretty much that's awesome um and they're starting to pay yeah. off yeah 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 Just starting to find stuff that i'm really comfortable with you know like like, like i said you know the whole um, strategy of like just opening three orders or three positions per trade um uh, obviously within like two percent risk and then you know pretty much like i think it's like what Mate does um, in his trading plan, it's a bit similar, you know. Oh, like, Mate? Yeah, yeah, it's like a bit similar in terms of how he structures his take profits and so on. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's the same for me, you know, open three three, three contracts or three positions, or whatever. Um, first TP at, um, at like 10 pips, you know, uh, to cover costs. Um, second TP at 30 pips, um, thereabouts, depending on, you know, depending on price action. Um, and then third TP, just, there is no TP, just let it run. Mm. Sort of thing. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I I tend to, um, close out my, my take profit most of the time, um, depending on, you know, however the trade is, is working out or how I think what my main target is. Uh, sometimes I'll just close the full thing, um, you know, like like I've been doing the past couple of days, where um, like I got a nice fake out on gold yesterday, but it was kind of out of my session right after eleven o'clock, which is London close. But it was a perfect setup. We got the fake out, um, so I ended up getting like uh, fifteen twenty pips, and I ended up just closing the full thing instead of leaving a runner. But it ended up dropping further, um, where I could have caught like a hundred pips, but it was still out of my session, so I stuck to my rules. Yeah. Um, in a way, even though it was at my session that I took the trade. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's just whatever uh, you're comfortable with, you know? Yeah, I think that's that's been a big thing for me, Um, you know, uh, and I, I think, like, it's, like, a bit of a difference in approach between, like, having exposure to Raja. Well, I never did Raja's course, but um, he communicates, and I think because that's what worked for him, he communicates in a way where, um people learning from him are it's like the best way is do exactly what he does you know sort of thing and mm. it's like man fuck trading is <laughs> it's it's you know it's do as you feel comfortable to be honest um just need to find a way of making it work and so it, it, with that being said like the whole monitoring of trades and like closing off 50 percent and whatnot just doesn't work for me um you know it doesn't work yeah it just doesn't work for me on a psychological level as well as like time constraints and so on so it just makes sense to set a um you know stop loss multiple take profits um you know once it hits the first take profit everything moves to break even and then it is what it is from there you know it's yeah. very subjective risk management and listen there's there's a reason why there's thousands of strategies out there because not everyone trades the same, you know, and that's that's why I think like when you're either running a mentorship or uh, you're teaching someone how to trade, it's it's you give them a basis of like, all right, this is the way I look at the market. And this is what makes sense to me. Um, I'll teach you how to read candles and wicks and, and understand the way the market moves and understand what fundamentals are and how they add confluence to your trades. But at the same time, this is how you form your own strategy and you get comfortable with the way that you trade. This is how you know, you form your own comfort in the market uh, on your own using the right psychology and thinking the right way in the market. I think that's the only way you can really teach someone. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I kind of learned, the, I, I don't want to say the hard way, but I learned in a way where when we first started the mentorship, I'm teaching you guys how to trade the way I do, right? Mm-hmm. And then I started to realize, okay, everyone sees the market differently. So it's better for me to just teach people how to form their own strategy, put together their own trading plan, 
right? And then work off of that. I'll give you a shell of a trading plan that we put together with all of you guys, right? And, yeah. you know, you guys get into that and you start back testing that trading plan. You start using it in the live market and then you start adding to it. You start adding different things. You don't add to it too quickly because most people don't stick to that trading plan right away. Mm. They end up deviating from it where because they see a random setup that they just want to take um, and they just enter the market like that. But you, you want to make sure that you're, you're, uh, you're seeing that set up enough times. And, th and that's why we, you know, we were talking about before this, um, this column that we made of different setups that you guys want to study. And, and, and every time you see them, you put them in here. If you get a new setup, you start a new card, right? So, okay. Uh, quick question. How long do you wait for like the markets to settle after like what's happened with GBP? Like, you know, high impact news. How long do you wait? 10, 15 minutes. Really? But what, that's interesting though, because like, my, my feeling is that, so you see how we've had this uh, massive bearish push over the last uh, what, one hour. Mm -hmm. Um there's this thing that Ted always used to say where he's like, you know, one candle, one candle is not, um, one candle is not a trend, you know? He says, uh, he says that about smaller time frame candles. Uh, okay. So with this being, first of all, the, um, uh, no, David, we didn't, there, there was no real entry unless you just took it, you know, and that's gambling to be honest with you. Like if you, if you're just taking this, when you see interest rates drop, and this price is just dropping and you enter, that's typically like gambling because you have no idea where the market's going to go. That's not your setup. You know, there's no clear stop loss either. You know, there's no clear entry on the one minute, right? So that's how you know, like, all right, I didn't really, I don't have FOMO from this trade. I'm fine missing that. I'm going to wait for the reaction to the news. If Is it something high impact like interest rates? Um, there should be a continuation of that move. Oh, okay. So, um, so you know, it, it's not just this move that changes the, you know, what Ted was saying, changes the direction of the market. It's the change of bearish, uh, bullish structure. We are in this bullish structure over here. We reach 156, uh, 155, um, uh, 154, 700. We're, we're in this area up here. Once we reach that, this consolidation area over here, we start to taper out. We start to consolidate a little bit, right? Yeah. Where we were over here. Yeah. Started to consolidate. Buyers started to come out. We started to collect orders, collect selling orders, right? Buyers and sellers are, are battling it out. And then all of a sudden you get that fundamental news that pushes price right out of that range, just like it did over here that we were pointing out, right? How long were we consolidating? We were in this range for about two weeks. Right. And then what catapulted us out of that range? It was the interest rate talks talking about increasing interest rates. So when you get that market sentiment in the market, you're going to push price out of that consolidation. And that's exactly what we just did before with that economic data. You know, you break the bullish structure, start to taper out a little bit. And then all of a sudden uh, you get one catalyst that pushes us out or you just get volume. Right, you could range in the London market, the Asian market. Then all of a sudden, pre New York and New York comes around, you get some more volume that pushes us out as well. But yeah. in this case, we got interest rates. Let's just see if it continues to just drop, or do we get some kind of a retracement over here? Now, what time is it? Seven forty-nine. Now, this is where your experience comes in with your certain pairs, right? Seven forty-nine. What kind of a move did we get yesterday? We got a nice win yesterday um, around this time as well. And I took a risky trade during this time just because I knew it was a high volume time, right? So 7.50 to 8 o'clock, you normally get some, some solid um, volume. So if this candle, is this five minute candle creating a top wick right now? And then is it going to pass the low of these wicks over here? If it does, you could potentially enter a low risk entry anticipating that drop but then again we could very well continue to consolidate in here and start changing market trends but right now there's nothing that tells me that we're going to continue bullish 
not until we break above this area over here. You just need certain levels to break over here for you to take any kind of sales. See, it looks like that five minute is creating its top wick. Now it's starting to flip bearish. Maybe. Good shit, Gary. There you go, man. Now in gold, we do have that clean move to the left. I'm looking for some kind of a support to form in here to take price in this range. All right, what did we say before? We are in this consolidation, but these are the ranges that you look for. Oh, I ended up moving that before. But these are the ranges you look for. Clean candles. All right? Let's go back to GJ. We don't mess this. There we go. We're starting to pass the low over here. Potentially take this trade real quick. I'm only risking 1%. Anticipating that volume push over here. Once we pass the low. If this candle starts flipping bullish again, that's where you could uh, close 50%. But this is where you start to know your pair and know when you get those volume pushes. Especially when you have interest rates behind you with the um, that confluence, this should uh, continue right back down. Tight stop loss, but I anticipate price continuing. I think uh, I'd only be interested. I'll only be con confident taking a trade on the on GJ if it retests. Um, what area is this now? Da -da 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 -da. If it retests like 154, 300, 200 area. Sorry, 154, 280. Reason being like looking at it on the four hour. Uh, if you can go to like your four hour. Please. Uh, yes. So, yeah, I see like this. Uh, just hold on a second. So I'm looking at this area. See how it's broken like this previous uh, support. Um, yeah, for me to enter, I'd need it to like retest and then go down. What yeah. I think what I think is gonna happen is we maybe get a further drop over here because we yeah. still have another hour for the four hour to close. Uh, and then maybe the next four hour comes up, creates its top wick and then continues to drop. Yeah, that could happen too. Let's see what we get over here. Let's get that volume push we normally get. Now, let's see the one that. We have enough volume to push us out. Good job, Gary. Great job, buddy. Killing it. this we got the one hour closing it's a five minute five minutes flipping bullish so i'm just going to close 50 and just let it go five minute ended up closing a doji but still a bearish candle i want price to exit this area
Trending lower lows and these wicks. Still printing lower highs on the uh, 15 minute. So the problem is we have the support over here, this whole area. We need price to kind of close below this, this area. And I got so much to do today. How's everyone's week going so far? Trading wise or overall? Both. Oh, the trading wise, I've just been taking it easy, just, you know, soaking up knowledge and, you know, just just listening and paying attention. And yeah, overall, everything's good. You know, just been working, staying busy. Good shit, man. Trying to kick out bad habits. Good. Getting, uh, getting through that course. Yeah, for sure. Love it. Love it. Oh, uh, Pat, this is uh, Carlos, new member in the uh, group. You may have seen what's him. Up, in Yo, what's up, Carlos? How you doing? Oh, great, man. Lovely to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, bro. Carlos is from uh, New Orleans, and Pat's from South Africa. Oh, sweet. It's badass. <laughs> Crazy. We're all over the world. Yeah. All right, so I'm probably going to close this full thing over here before eight o'clock because I don't want to get caught by that 30 minute wick Steph what's happening with your Instagram still I know still still not with me <laughs> they, they don't want you man <laughs> it's not that they don't want me they just don't want to do any work they don't want to have a customer service team Oh man. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Get your shit together. You're a multi billion dollar industry company. Oh, Why do you just create another one? I'm too stubborn to create another one. I don't want to create another one. Like, I got all these people that, that know me and follow me on there. Uh, I got all my posts, you know, that people could go back into that archive and, and learn. Yes, yeah, I see. You get, you get your followers back easily, though. Uh, I don't. Uh, the, the easily pick that up. Sharma, Sharma will put you out there. She'll get you all them. Yeah, it's it's not the the like thought of like, damn, I don't want to lose my followers, all that stuff. But it's like people all around the world that have already followed me from Raquel shouting me out. Um, all these people, they might not be able to find me again. And these people yeah. that reach out to me for help and stuff like that. Um, and then the the last thing is like. A couple of dudes were telling me about like you know be be careful of reporting this guy because um, I got my account disabled stuff like that and I feel like they didn't try hard enough to get it back and they just opened a new one, you know. Yeah. And me being the way I am, I now I just that makes me want to just keep fighting for for my own and, and prove myself right that I'll be able to get it back. That's fair enough. All right, so it's eight o'clock right now. We're still holding the support. Damn, it's so fucking annoying. Oh my god. 
What what is? I said the, the scammers, man, on, on, on Instagram. You fuck it up for everyone. Some dude yeah. lost a thousand bucks to this guy. Yikes. Oh. Uh, I feel bad because like he, he was saying he wants to join our group um once he gets his finances in order, but um after that happening he kinda just uh just fucked it up for him. That's terrible. Uh, well, to me, all right. So, for me, I naturally, you know, I'm always going to feel bad about that. But I'm also like, all right, if you've been following me for so long, which he has, he knows my thing is jumping on a Zoom with you and, um, you know, getting to the bottom of your trading and seeing what I can do to help, you know. And and you should know that you're going to hop on a, a Zoom with me and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure everything out for you. Are we gonna get there she words? goes. What's up? TJ. Yeah, I just uh, closed um, 80% at um, tw- uh, 10 pips. Nice. Yeah, I'm in that two action. Awesome. Good shit. Yeah, I took it too. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah, good. yeah I, I was the only one taking that. I just yeah, figured, I like, all right, it's a little risky. I'm taking it on the five minute. I'm not going to bring you guys into this. I know we've been taking a bunch of winning trades this week, so. Um, I just figured I, I wouldn't even ask. See, this is what I'm talking about. I normally cancel that take profit, especially with the interest rates coming out. We could get a further drop over here all the way into this zone. Yeah, nice clean candles to the left as well. Oh, yeah. Wish I didn't secure so much. Uh, where are we at on gold? All right, perfect. This is perfect. Okay, so clean move to the left. We exit this consolidation. Like I said this morning, I know I always repeat myself, but it just sticks in your head when I do. Uh, I would have entered right here after this candle. We closed above this resistance over here. Got this high created. Retest, candle with a wick to fill. Enter after this candle closed. Reason I didn't enter is because I just came to the charts and I'm not going to enter as soon as I get to the chart. So what I was waiting for was price to actually break out of this consolidation as well. I really didn't want to trade in that either. I wanted to wait for these clean moves up here to um, to take a trade. So now we have a clean, strong close above resistance over here. Now this candle closed with barely any top wick. So what does that tell me? This candle passed the high right away. We're going to get a nice clean retest over here and a support formed to retest these highs up here. Right? So. That is um, what we're looking at on gold. Now, part of this move, and maybe this candle right here, could have had something to do with Great Britain keeping their interest rates where they are, right? When you have low interest rates, what happens to gold? Especially with the central bank, or the not the central bank, but the Fed, that's going to raise gold. Or when you, when you either drop interest rates or keep them the same, excuse me. 28 pips. I like a number. So now let's take a look at the four hour again. Clean move to the left, should be coming down to, to fill this area. And GJ has been paying us right since uh, the past couple of weeks. You know, we had this week right or these two weeks right in here where we really stayed out of GJ. Most of my trades were on gold. Same thing over here. Maybe took two or three trades when we were in here. And then we grabbed a lot of this move right over here when we got those interest rate drops. And then uh, some of us, obviously Pat as well, took uh, some nice trades to take this right back up here. So this is awesome. Now we're taking this move, and it looks like a four-hour entry where we enter as we break below that four-hour. So 
So we could very well continue down from here. The markets um they should trend more now it's summertime, don't they? Ooh. Sorry about that. Sneeze. What was that? The markets don't they, they trend more like in July and August, don't they? Because the big all the banks are off for summer. Yeah, yeah. This is uh like especially May. Uh May and June. Um you'll get, you know, a lot of uh banks taking profit on big positions or um, options retiring uh, many different you know things happening towards the end there and then we start to lose a little volume in the summer unfortunately but um, it, it, trend, it trends better doesn't it you get, like the swing traders are in more for the summer aren't they yeah that's that's a good point you get bigger moves think of it, yeah so you can hold like, hold a position for days yeah yeah 100% Yo, when any of you guys sneeze, do you get this weird like feeling throughout your body? I know that's very vague, <laughs> but like it's almost like an ache, like a tingle feeling, like a tingle, but like an ache at the same time, like all through your chest, your your arms. Anyone get that? Sometimes, like a little, like a little tension. Yep. Sometimes I think it's just the pressure in the ears. Oh, that could be it. Good point. Yeah, man, it's weird. It's kind of new. Like I've never really had that. Maybe I'm just getting older. I wish I didn't secure as much, and that's something I'll take. Oh, this is what I wanted to ask you guys. Um, Carlos, you went through the mental foundation part, right? Yes, sir. Have you been – did you start doing your AARs yet? Oh, yeah, for sure. That's yeah. Cool. Does that help you at all? Yeah, for sure, definitely. It's like – like, um, when I, like – I guess, like, when I schedule out my days and, like, I just uh, you mean like AR is like the after action report, right? Yes. Um. That that's like uh, like you know when you plan when you plan out your day and you no, take it so or the, the um. So you have your daily must like things that you need to get done throughout the entire day. It's like a to do list, but like yeah, yeah, list. yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. You have that, yeah. but then you have the after action report where it's um basically like a journal that you're writing to yourself. Like a diary. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I have a um well I just uh like jot down like personal thoughts like throughout the day. Cool. And, uh, all of my um you know, make sure uh, I go through my checklist and how I uh, make sure I complete my daily goals. Nice. Okay. Um now the, there is nothing in this world more powerful than positive self-talk. And it's not just like pumping yourself up and all that that bullshit, but what I'm talking about is like writing to yourself what you were thinking throughout the day through the trading session, especially, but how did, how did I wake up today? Um, you know, you know, things that you're maybe grateful for stuff like that. You don't have to write that down, but these are things that you want to wake up and think about, uh, to get a great start to your day. But when it comes to writing about the morning and, and like, listen, I, I woke up or I did something I didn't want to do, or I said I wasn't going to do, or I, or I didn't do something I said I was going to do. Uh, and maybe you could write that in red if you have an iPad and, and uh, you have that Apple Pencil. You could change the different colors. I write, you know, bad things in red, good things in green, neutral things in white. Um, but there is nothing more powerful than that if you can do that on a daily basis and stay consistent with it. And a lot of these things that I say um, in the course to do, uh, different suggestions, stuff like that, they're only suggestions. Like, you know, I, I'm not saying that these are like the absolute keys to success and what you're going to be doing. Like the things I'm telling you to actually do, like the ARs or daily must, I'm not saying those are the things that will get you to the next level. But what I am saying is that, you know, I'm sure there's many other different things that you can do, but at the same time, the more that you, it, it's the idea of staying consistent with those things, right? And doing those things every single day. And these are just like little examples of things that you could do. And these are things that work for me, but they're little examples for you to do, for you to stay consistent with something every single day. If you could stay consistent writing an after action report in the morning to yourself and that night to yourself, 
Why do you think the Navy SEALs are so uh, successful? They do that. Special forces in the military, they do that. They have after action reports to tell themselves, all right, this is what we're doing. This is what we could be doing better on our mission. Or if you're on a, a professional football team or any kind of professional team, you're constantly looking at film, seeing what you could do better, how you could beat your opponent, opponent across from you uh, even better. All right, basketball, same thing. But if you could do that with trading and in your life as a whole, oh my God, like t- there's no telling where you're going to go. But most people cannot stay consistent with that. And that's why most people fail at what they're trying to do, what they're trying to accomplish. So again, what I'm saying, it's not the end all be all. It's just, these are things that work for me and they will be working for you if you stay consistent with them. Uh, You'll feel much better about yourself. You'll have a lot of confidence in yourself. uh, And I couldn't stress that enough. I think that AAR video is one of the the best suggestions that that you guys can uh, implement. James just hopped off. See you, James. Yeah, I agree. I agree uh, with everything you just said. It, it definitely like just comes into play, you know, after time. It becomes a, a natural instinct. Yeah, no, 100%. But, um, how is this? Um, how about Gary? Have you been uh, keeping up with that stuff? What's that? Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm cooking lunch. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. You um, you've been keeping up with like after action reports and stuff like that. The what report? The what? The what report? After action reports from the uh from the course. Uh, want to say no. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say obviously no. Um, <laughs> highly recommend doing it, especially yeah. the, the, the spot you're in right now. I mean, you're doing great when it comes to trading, uh, but like just keeping your life in order and, and making sure that you're keeping up with with everything that you say you're gonna do throughout the day. Yeah, um, highly yeah, recommend yeah. doing it or go going back and watching that that video. Yeah, need I need to, I need to start getting better at sort of things. Yeah, even just journaling, I need to get back into just journaling all my, my trades. I just yeah. I just come off the computer and then that's it. I don't, I don't really go back. But. You guys are, are trading in the hardest market in the world. And you need to constantly, if you want to be like good at this and great at this, eventually, you got to put constant pressure on yourself. And not pressure on yourself as far as making money. P- pressure on yourself is putting work in and making sure that you're getting things done every single day. Am I reading, let's say, 20 minutes of fundamentals every day? Am I learning about economics every single day? to try to get myself better and more acclimated in these markets and understand these even better. And my back testing for one hour a day, these different things, these add up. Trust me, the consistency is everything in what you want to do. So if you have balance in your life, but also any consistency for the trading, there's no telling where you're going to go. Yeah, definitely. My kids just run me ragged though. <laughs> What's it? What happened? Well, that's about kids. They just run me ragged, though. Oh, I know, I know. And and listen, especially when when it comes to kids or you know jobs stuff like that. And I've said it before in here, the the ones that have the steady schedule of a nine to five um, have a massive advantage. I know you want to be out of work. I know you don't want to be working anymore. I, I know you want to be trading full time. But the fact that you have a nine to five every day, which first of all pays you and keeps your mind off the money as much as it really can when it comes to trading, but it also gives you that structure where, okay, I wake up at this time, I I trade in the morning, right? I trade the pre-New York and New York market or the London market or the Asian market, wherever you are in the world. I trade that and then I go to work and then I get out of work at five and then I have, you know, from five to 10 to either balance with my, my, my relationships with my wife or my, my fiance, girlfriend, whatever, and also putting in work when it comes to back testing, learning about fundamentals, stuff like that. So you have that five hour window to 10, uh, 10 o'clock PM that you could get a bunch of work in. You could go to the gym and you can structure those five hours every single day that you want. Sometimes you could structure things uh, while you're at work, right? Uh, which is even better. If you want to be able to structure your entire day, that's so important. But when you have kids or you have a job, 
uh, and, and everything seems to be all over the place and it's very hard to find balance, just structure your day as much as you possibly can. So the 15 minute on gold, looks like it's forming some kind of a support over here. Let's see if we get that bullish close. If we get an engulfing close, that'd be beautiful. A nice clean move to the left, 815 coming in. This will probably be my second trade of the day if we take it. I don't know why this is saying, why is it saying minus? All right, guys, I'm out. Need to head into a meeting. All right, Pat, nice having you on. I'll see you uh, tomorrow or sure. Sure. we have time. Nice reconnecting, guys. Have a great day ahead. Wait, hold on, Pat, one second. Sure. Oh, never mind. You're good. All right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, All right, man. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Come on, bounce, bounce. So, Gio, every, everything's coming along with the uh, business, huh? Yeah, everything's falling apart. It's falling apart? I fall, I mean, not falling apart, but like, <laughs> falling <laughs> into places. Yeah, really man, falling. everything's yeah. falling apart. <laughs> nah. Good shit, man. Falling into place, huh? Yeah, uh, so far right now, uh, um, they're easing down the lockdown because the vaccines, st they started rolling out vaccines over there. So hopefully by uh, trying to target either September or October, okay, I might I might be able to travel down there and you know start the whole you know the whole construction thing. That'd be awesome, man. Go see your boys too. Yep, I haven't seen them in a minute. Uh, last time I was there was what twenty, what twenty nineteen, right before the lockdown. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. You know what else is crazy? No, none of us knew each other. I know, right? 2019. Now we basically spend every day together. Yeah, this GJ trade, the only reason I didn't take it is because I was waiting for the one hour to create this stop with. Mm. Uh, yeah, it, it passed the the lower the the low the low of the previous uh, candle, like in the first two minutes, I think, or three minutes, right? Um, where right over the here? one hour? Yeah, okay. I mean the one hour the one hour time frame. If you look at because the one hour, I think that's when you enter, right? No, I I entered at seven fifty, so I entered oh, at seven fifty okay. based on the five minute as we were. Creating this resistance over here, we're tracing strong bearish candle over here, but ended up closing at support. We get this candle coming right back down, but then we have like a little bit of a fake out over here, but mm -hmm. we're still retracing and retesting this area right here. So we get this bearish close. This candle created its top wick. And then normally around 750, anywhere from 750 to eight o'clock, you get a nice push on GJ. So when this was creating its top wick, I saw it create a top wick flip bearish and pass low this candle around 750 when this candle opened that's when i ended up taking this and then it ended up retracing a little bit flipping bullish and that's where i closed 50 percent yeah i'm not that confident with the five minute time frame yeah. so i was waiting not for... that confident no with the five minute not really that's fine man so Completely. yeah so uh i was looking at the 15 minute candle um, so that, uh, 745 candle closed below support, but I was waiting for the next candle to create its top week first, but it's just, you know, just, it's just dropped. So I missed that. Now, uh, yeah, that, like I said, however you want to trade and whatever makes sense to you, you do, you know, it's so important. Looking for this opportunity on gold. This might be nice. Yeah, just watch out for the five thirty news. Let's see how how the numbers comes out. Yep, with unemployment. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we're waiting for.
short gj plus All right, we got three minutes for unemployment to come out. I think anything above 400,000 or even 412, um, we're going to see a nice rocket on uh, gold. Let me just get this right there. See what we get on here. What do you think the number would be? Higher or lower? That's a good question. I'm, I always lean towards optimism. So I want to be optimistic about the US, but at the same time, I want to see this proof on gold. Well, I know, but like, what, what do you see on? how it is right now, like in your daily. Because for me, I, I, I'm like, I'm really experiencing or seeing a lot of people quitting their job. So the last two, two weeks, we've gotten worse than expected, right? In the past, before that, we had three in a row. So obviously mm -hmm. every, every week is, um, it, it's kind of like that uh, um, gambling mindset where, where you need to understand that every uh, flip of a coin, it's 50-50. You ever read uh, Trading in the Zone? Yeah. And, and how not one trade is, is the same to the other. So, you know, you could right. look at this as a pattern, like three in a row, and then maybe we get three in a row worse than expected. But at the same time, every week is independent, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think GDP will stay the same, and I think unemployment will be – I think we hit 400,000 again. I think so too. Just by experiencing people quitting their job and uh -huh. you know, yep. I think maybe they know that, and we're grabbing liquidity right now. To continue right back up. Sometimes I get the uh, data coming out a little earlier. All right. There goes gold. We're loving. I just took a gamble. Worse than expected. Let's move this a little bit down. This was a uh, – 
Yeah, I shouldn't have taken this one. <laughs> Come on now, continue up. Come on, gold. That was a bad move. <laughs> it's trying to grab more liquidity. What's up? I think it's trying to grab more liquidity, like make it low, make it lower before it heads back up. I mean, fundamentally, it should it should at least you know go back to that resistance. I hope that was a stupid, stupid move. I don't know why I just did that. I thought I was gonna grab a few pips out of that. Yeah, I don't deserve to win that trade. No. <laughs> yeah, stupid. Stupid, stupid decision. That's why we don't trade news, boys. <laughs> Wait for fake for support to be created. Yep, yep. And obviously stopped out at break even on uh, GJ. Damn, man. That's the only little spike we got. Unemployments or GDP stayed the same. Damn, all shitty numbers coming out of the US and you couldn't spike up. Now, all good. Only wish 1%. Yeah, we're back to. So last one was that last June, April. April was four twelve. Now we're back to that numbers again. Um, let's see. Yep. Damn. Right back to the original. Yeah, just just uh, right now, my, um, right now, uh, going back to the office, I've seen, like, just in our just in our company, I've seen a lot of new people, and I was like, who cool, who these people are? I didn't even know them. <laughs> and they, so you know, there's a lot of people who quit, and there's a lot of new hires, yeah. But like, you know, probably feels more people weird. Are, huh? Probably feels very weird, doesn't it? Very well. Uh, actually, right now, uh, I think it was yeah, yeah, just yesterday, we implemented the uh, no more mess. Really? Yeah. No so mess. Just yep, not mandatory. Okay. And it's just weird seeing those people without masks. Oh, I know, I know. It's it's a little weird seeing a lot of people in compact areas too. All right, Gary. Mm -hmm. I'll see you later, brother. See you later, guys. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see this five-minute candle. Ended up closing bullish. This 15-minute uh, candle closed with no bottom wink over here. So we could potentially take this up, but we need more confirmation. GJ looks like it's... Uh... There's a huge rejection. Might correct this, you know. Yep. Uh, Test the high over here. Maybe mm -hmm. we come up and retest this area right here. Come up and retest, create a resistance, and then continue down to retest this low. I could see that.
I am disappointed in myself for taking that gold trade. Dude, did you see that building in Miami collapsed? No. Which one? In downtown? Uh, um, right on South Beach. Um, let me see. Oh, wow, yeah. You saw it? Well, looking at it right now. Yeah. At least one dead left South Florida. Um, wait, it, it, it's a res residential building, right? There's a yeah, um, clouds and E, oh, yeah. um, Miami Dominion building, 12 story building. Like, how does that happen? That's insane all right brother i am about to hop off i got so much shit i gotta do today um then head to the gym finally back in the gym after my leg a little mishap but uh, I will see you tomorrow. All right, brother. Sounds good, man. Have a good Thanks day. See you tomorrow. You too.